Hi guys, SolidDubbed here and today I'm doing a video review on the Philips 34 6B1C. Now this is a 34 inch ultra wide curved monitor with a built in KVM switch. It can be found for around $480 in the US, whilst in the UK there is no official buy links but it can be found between £530 and £570. Links will be down in the description below in case you're interested. Also in the description below you'll find a suggestion of other monitors that I've reviewed. I've reviewed over 140 monitors and I've got a bunch of ultra wide monitors which, which kind of compete in the same sort of respect as this Philips. They'll be at all different types of price points, however the closest one that I felt um, sits versus this um, Philips monitor is the BenQ EX350 uh, one R and also the Samsung uh, CF91. So they basically have almost the same resolution and well they've got the exact same resolution and the same refresh rate. There's certain pros and cons that I will allude to in uh, throughout this review. Now this Philips monitor has, as I mentioned before, a 34 inch uh, monitor. It's curved. It runs at 3440 times 1440p at 100 hertz. It's got a five milliseconds quoted response time, an aspect ratio of 21 by nine, VA panel technology also behind it. In terms of input, it's got DisplayPort, HDMI, USB Type-C, and USB Type-C also delivers 90 watts of power to your laptop. So if you want to connect up your MacBook, for example, or your Dell laptop, you can do so and charge it. It's got a headphone output, Ethernet LAN as well, and it's also got built-in speakers just for your convenience. So that is the core specs and one other thing I always seem to forget is that this uh, monitor also has adaptive sync built in and I will allude to that and how that uh, conveys to NVIDIA G-Sync uh, in just a bit. So let's talk about the build quality of the monitor. It's got a three-sided borderless design which is great to see. There's no um, tailing off of the image on the sides either, so it's nice that um, the image is preserved. Some uh, older ultra-wide monitors essentially had problems displaying text on the side. That's not the case with this monitor. There's a small um, uh, bezel at the bottom with the Philips and a, a light sensor as well, uh, which is used um, for uh, detecting if you're at your desk or not. So it saves on energy and also is an IK sensor as well. The stand is a, um, a square shaped stand which is slightly odd, uh, different from a lot of monitors out there, but this does mean it provides the monitor with plenty of sturdiness. It also allows for height adjustment, tilt adjustment, and it also can um, uh, pivot from uh, left and right as well, which is great to see because not many uh, other ultra-wide monitors have this sort of functionality. Um, other than that, it's got physical buttons at the uh, bottom right hand side in order to access the OSD. So um, in terms of the actual build quality and design of it, I have no complaints. Now I'm going to zoom in so you guys can actually uh, see uh, the OSD and kind of understand uh, some of the settings. So the power sensor, as I alluded to before, and the light sensor as well can be enabled and disabled through here. There's also a low blue light mode as well. You can choose through different inputs, as I mentioned, uh, the inputs that it's got. Now the picture, you might notice the brightness is on 5%, that's simply because of the camera to pick up. Normally I use the monitor at around 80 odd or nine, well, about 90 to 95% uh, brightness, and I'll, I'll let you know in just a bit why. Um, other than that, smart response, you'll probably want to have that as off, but unless you want to be gaming, then set it up to the fastest response time. Um, and again, I'll um, mention that in a bit. There's PIP and PPB mode as well. Audio, as I mentioned, via the built-in speakers or via 3.5 mil jack. Color, now there's three different um, modes to choose from over here, but within the color temperature, you've got um, a wide variety of um, color temperatures to also choose from. I would personally suggest using the monitor on the color temperature 6,500. Um, however, um, your mileage may vary, and again, I'll allude to that in just a bit. Other than that, you've got USB settings, so it's got USB 3.2, which is great to see, and it's also got that built-in KVM switch, uh, which is great for multitasking users. So that's the OSD in a nutshell, and now let's move on to the actual picture quality. So the picture quality out of the box, I wasn't too impressed with. Now Philips do provide a calibration report, and the actual calibration report doesn't seem to be really great with its average delta E of uh, 1.1 um, and a measurement data which seems a little bit skewed off on the sides. And to be honest, with my own eyes, I noticed that the monitor looked a little bit dull and it looked a little bit um, lacking of popping color. So for example, over here in the middle, you've got the mountain range. You really want it to be having a really nice um, contrast between um, the, the trees over here. I'm not talking about contrast ratio, I'm talking about the colors popping from the mountains to the trees. 
Uh, moving on to another image. Um, again, this is a, a beautiful image which really does come out in IPS panels uh, specifically, or uh, quantum dot uh, panels which use VA panels uh, panel technology. This just didn't seem to really appeal to me. It just didn't seem to be really popping in color, which is slightly a shame because I was expecting a lot more from the monitor. So what I did is I then put it onto a calibrator to see how it actually performed. And lo and behold, I wasn't too surprised about the results. First off, let's talk about brightness. Now, as I mentioned before, there are several different modes. You've got the color um, temperature mode and you've got the sRGB mode. If you set it to the sRGB mode, which is the mode I use it to, to look at how well the monitor comes out the box, it runs at 202 uh, nits, which is pretty low in terms of brightness. This does, however, mean you get an average delta of 2.2 with a maximum of 4.1. Contrast ratio sits at um, around 1,900 to 1, which is as you'd expect for a VA panel. If, however, you run it at the, um, the color temperature that I told you to do, you'll see, notice the color accuracy reduces. However, the brightness increases to 285. So use it as you, uh, as you will. If you're someone who's looking for a more color accurate panel, then you might want to use it in the sRGB mode and kind of sacrifice on the overall brightness. Now, um, speaking about the brightness, there's also uh, brightness uniformity, which I want to talk about. Uh, which I've actually got open over here, what you'll be able to see is on the bottom left-hand side, the monitor kind of struggled. Now, this is pure panel lottery. Your monitor might be better or worse, but I was slightly disappointed to see a 2019 built monitor to be performing pretty bang on average with a 2017 or 2016 built monitor. I would expect technology to come through a little bit more, and unfortunately, brightness uniformity across the image isn't that great. About brightness uniformity and also backlight bleed, I did also test it with backlight bleed. You can see that um, the monitor isn't too bad. It's kind of to be expected to be like this. Um, it's not over overly bad or overly good. Uh, it's pretty much bang on average. And now I would like to also talk about the sRGB value. Now the sRGB value in the um, color temperature mode uh, ran at 98% whilst being 118% gamut volume, which means it's overextending. Whilst on the sRGB mode, which you'd expect to have pretty much near 100%, it hit 82 and 83% respectively, which seemed a little bit odd given the results that I, that I got. Anyway, all I'll say for, to that is that it's not the most color accurate monitor and even to the naked eye, you'd probably want a little bit better um, color accuracy. In this respect, other monitors, for example, the, the Samsung line monitors um, provide much better color accuracy and pop much better in colors. And the same could be said about this BenQ um, monitor as well. So slightly disappointed to see that. Then I moved them to gaming performance. As you might have seen, I, I freeze the frame over here when I was uh, doing some gaming tests. I did the same sort of gaming test on Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and I found the monitor to not to respond that well. On the plus side, unlike the BenQ um, EX350-01R, um, it had no frame skipping at 100 hertz. So it ran 100 hertz flawlessly with no frame skipping. However, the BenQ had to be run at 99 hertz or 98 hertz in order to avoid frame skipping from occurring. It also, I should also mention when it comes to gaming, is that this uh, Philips monitor doesn't have any HDR uh, functionality built in. So worth bearing in mind that other monitors such as the BenQ or other newer ultra wide monitors have HDR. So this doesn't have HDR at all. Now when it came to game performance, as I mentioned, response time was pretty slow. And even if I dialed up the uh, response time to the fastest mode setting, I felt that the monitor just didn't do that well. So as you've been able to see smart response time on fastest, or hopefully you'll be able to see, um, I found it just to be a little bit slow. Input lag wasn't that great either, and limited to 100 hertz means that it's not really made for gamers. I mean, this monitor isn't really made for gamers as it is, but I thought to mention it as well. If you want a gaming um, grade ultra wide monitor, consider this uh, AOC Black Edition uh, monitor instead. It's far better for gaming. So, what do I make of this monitor? It's not great at gaming, it's not great at color accuracy, but one thing it does do, and something that it kind of uh, leads from the pack, is connectivity and that KVM switch. If you want to know more about the KVM switch, I'll link it down in the description below. Essentially allows you to use two uh, PCs simultaneously within one screen, without you having to switch between inputs. That is pretty cool, but it's pretty limited. So only a certain type of person will actually benefit from that. So ultimately, if you're not that type of person who doesn't want that KVM switch, there are other monitors out there, be it for a little bit more expensive or a lot more expensive, for example, this AOC monitor, are monitors I would recommend over this Philips. 
So that's pretty much my conclusion. I wouldn't recommend it to the average Joe. However, it's a monitor that will appeal to a very small, um, finite crowd. So more of the business uh, orientated people who are not looking for the utmost best color accuracy, nor are they looking for the best gaming response, but they want a monitor that kind of ticks a little bit of every single box. This is the monitor then for you. I wouldn't personally buy it. I wouldn't personally recommend it, but I can see there's a market for it. So there we go, guys. I've been totally dubbed. Hopefully you've enjoyed this un honest, unbiased, unpaid review. If you have, make sure you give it a like, subscribe if you want to see more, favorite and share uh, as you help the channel grow. All right, guys. I've been totally dubbed. Take care and bye-bye.